2023 saw five banks bite the dust. That's not terribly unusual, but there are other signs the American financial system is about to blow up big time. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. 2023 was not a great year for banks. In fact, several dramatic bank collapses made 2023 the biggest year ever for bank failures. And 2024 could be much worse. Five banks failed in 2023. In early March, Silicon Valley Bank was closed by regulators and the FDIC took control. Most of its assets were sold to First Citizens Bank later that month. A few days later, Signature Bank shareholders lost everything as regulators shut it down. And in May, First Republic Bank was taken over by the FDIC and sold to JP Morgan. All three of these banks fell victim to bank runs. A bank run is what happens when a ton of a bank's depositors try to withdraw their deposits all at once. Banks don't keep enough cash on hand to cover tons of withdrawals at once, so when that happens, it's bad news for the bank. Big time. Bank runs aren't new, and as one can imagine, they are generally considered to be a bad thing. In July, a small bank in Kansas called Heartland Tri-Cities Bank became the fourth bank to collapse, reportedly due to a huge scam, although no one seemed to know the nature of the scam. Most recently, on November 3rd, Citizens Bank of Sac City, Iowa was seized by regulators and auctioned off. Citizens Bank didn't fail because of a bank run or a scam, it was just good old-fashioned bad loan. There were flashing headlines aplenty when the first few banks went down, but the news didn't pay much attention to the collapse of Citizens Bank. Why should it? It was just a tiny bank, it only had two branches in operation, and just under $59 million in total deposits, which isn't much in the banking world. And anyway, five bank failures in a year isn't actually terribly unusual most of the time. It's not that the number of failures made 2023 the biggest year for bank collapses, it's the dollars. The banks that went under had nearly $549 billion of combined assets, the largest total ever in a single year. It gets worse. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, provides insurance to banks that cover any account up to $250,000. Since most accounts contain less than that, even when banks go under, typically most of their deposits end up covered, and the bank's customers get to just move their money to a different bank. But most of the 2023 bank failures were a different matter. Only 50% of Citizens Bank's $59 million in deposits were fully covered under the FDIC. Only 50% of $59 million in deposits being fully insured is pretty bad. But the earlier failed banks were even worse. First Republic Bank had just 36% of its $229 billion in deposits fully insured, while Silicon Valley Bank had just 15% of its $209 billion in deposits fully insured. What that means is that when these banks failed, most of the money they were holding just went poof. Or it would have if the government hadn't stepped in and said, we'll cover it and everyone, please look away. That's pretty bad. What's worse though? is that as of March 11th, 2023, the FDIC had only $124.5 billion on its balance sheet, plus an additional $100 billion line of credit from the US Treasury. That's a total of only $224.5 billion to cover insurance obligations if more banks fail. And what's really mind-blowing is that the total deposits in the entire US banking sector are around $22 trillion. Yes, that's trillion with a T. In other words, the math works out that only 1.26% of total deposits in all US banks is actually insured by the FDIC if things go all 1929. I don't know about you, but I don't find that very reassuring. Right now you're probably thinking, okay, that all sounds pretty sketchy, but none of that means that more banks are going to fail, right? It'll be all right. Well, the thing is, there are other warning signs that things will get worse before they get better. We'll take a look at them after the break. Welcome back. So the entire banking system has $22 trillion in it, while the FDIC only insures 1.26% of that amount. Not great. On top of that, five banks failed in 2023. Five banks failing in a year is not even out of the ordinary. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. 
There are some key warning signs that are occurring, and if you have a bank account, you should probably be paying attention. The most logical place to start if you want to try to accurately predict the future is by looking at the past. As Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Here's a chart from the FDIC website of U.S. bank failures organized by year. The red line indicates the number of banks that failed, while the green line indicates the total assets in millions of dollars that were lost by failed banks. Let's take a closer look. A quick inspection reveals that between three and eight banks typically fail each year in the United States, working out to an average of about four failed banks per year. Okay, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Small businesses go bust all the time. The same inspection also indicates that the failed banks lose somewhere between $163 million and $6.7 billion worth of assets when they fail, which works out to an average of about $2.3 billion total assets lost per year. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. All of these failed banks are minnows in a very big pond, so they don't have a lot of deposits to begin with. A closer inspection reveals that two separate three-year periods in which zero banks failed, followed by a return to average failure rate, 2005 to 2007, and 2021 to 2023. Hmm, that's odd. Otter still is the steep increase in the assets lost at or a little after the end of those three-year periods. Looks like it's not just tiny banks that are failing anymore. Some of the bigger fish are beginning to flounder. If you've been practicing your pattern recognition skills while I've been talking, you probably know something concerning. The massive spike in bank failures that happened immediately after the 2005-2007 period. Given that the 2021 and 2023 period looks nearly identical, I wonder what might happen on the chart next. Rest assured, you're not the only one who thinks they know the answer to that question. Institutional investors have been paying attention and are placing their bets accordingly. While at the same time, retail investors, that's regular individual people like you and me, have been pulling their money out of the banking system like it's going out of style. In other words, both big money and small money are thinking the same thing, which almost never happens and almost always means trouble on the financial horizon. Of course, it isn't just a historical chart that's concerning people. U.S. banks are currently holding massive amounts of toxic assets, similar to what was going on in 2007. How massive? $620 billion massive. And it isn't limited to tiny banks like the ones in Iowa either. Huge banks like Bank of America are in deep. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So historical charts aren't painting a very pretty picture of the near future of the American banking system. Which shouldn't be surprising given that the banks are sitting on $620 billion of toxic assets, $109 billion of which is held by Bank of America alone. But who cares, right? It's not like the big banks are showing any signs of financial distress, like say, closing thousands of branch locations around America and laying off tens of thousands of employees. That would be madness. What's that, Shelley? Oh. Oh no. Oh no! You may have noticed that some of the largest U.S. banks have recently been closing branches all over the country. But not to worry, this could just be part of a broader historical trend. Brick and mortar banking locations have been on a net downtrend since 2009, with the increasing popularization of locationless, internet-only banks such as First Internet Bank, Discover Bank, and others. This makes sense since as technology improves, efficiency improves, which leads to increased convenience. This is nothing new. What is new, however, is the rapidness of branch closures in recent years. Between 2017 and 2022, around 7,000 bank branches were closed in the U.S., while 3,000 branches closed in 2022 alone. And around 1,300 bank branches have been closed this year as of October. What's most concerning is why so many bank branch closures are happening. Pressure from higher rates and distressed loans. Higher interest rates and distressed loans aren't good for any size bank, but if you're big enough, you can cut costs to try and stay solvent, like, say, by laying off thousands upon thousands of people. And we're not the only ones who find this worrying. Government regulatory agencies are paying attention, too. Early in 2023, the FDIC proposed new regulations on banks with assets of at least $100 billion. 
And the Federal Reserve later put out a press release confirming the changes. Specifically, the government is requiring a 16 to 19% aggregate increase in big banks' available capital in order to backstop loans and act as a cushion against future losses. Maybe they know something we don't? Of course, new banking regulations mean new costs for banks to operate, which could actually increase the likelihood of bank failures and exacerbate an already looming crisis. And the cherry on the top of this dog turd cake that's been baking for the past three years? Financial analysts have calculated that even if the new regulations had already been in place at the start of 2023, they still wouldn't have prevented the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank. Maybe the government should change its motto from E Pluribus Unum to Too Little, Too Late. So yeah, the situation is pretty grim. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make another episode about steps you can take. Because it's times like these that in the past, human civilizations have gotten a little chaotic, often resorting to human sacrifices. YouTube might consider that too controversial to talk about, which is why I've hidden a conversation about that in gaming content. Check out this video about human sacrifices according to The Sims. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.